Well, you're probably out there sitting and thinking, which supercharger should I go with for my 8th gen Civic? Should I go with a root style like the CT Comtech Engineering Supercharger or should I go with a Roadtrek Supercharger by Craftswork? I don't know. Well guys, I test drove both the Roadtrek Supercharged Civic SI 8th Gen and the Comtech Supercharged Root Style Blower Civic SI. And I'm going to talk to you guys about Root Style Blower on this video. And I'm going to also do a comparison, just first-hand experience driving those two different vehicles and what I think are the pros and cons of each supercharger. So stay tuned if you're interested on that content. If not, make sure you turn off the video right now. Also, make sure you dislike the video right now and comment down below why I should stop doing YouTube. Oh shit, that's a lot of comments, guys. Take it easy on me, all right? Listen, listen, I know what you're thinking. Right now, you're looking at this. And you're like, yeah, he smokes the weed. <laughs> but no, I do not. It's actually the best party on campus for 20, 2012, which makes this shirt just about eight years old. Shit, that's a pretty old shirt. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Let's jump into the screen recording and talk about this 8th gen Civic, guys. So another, uh, this one's a coupe. The last one was a sedan I test drove. 2006 from the get-go the car looks pretty clean xxrs 527s probably a 17 by 8.25 wheel fitment with a 35 millimeter offset and if you don't understand those numbers right now i was part of a fitment scene back in the day we ran a lot of fitments on my eighth gen civic si and that's why i'm familiar with offsets lug nut patterns whatnot tire stretch and sizes and the car looks pretty good. We got a beautiful Comtech supercharger here, um, root style blower. And what that means is it actually, let me Google it real quick. Anyway, whatever it means, it means that the actual things that create the air, the, the, the force are bolted onto the intake manifold and directly push in the air into the engine it has a lot of benefits compared to the road trek supercharger and we'll talk about those in a little bit overall car looks clean right here you can see that the front bumper has some issues some damage here lightly scuffed it looks like it maybe was sanded but no big deal overall the car looked clean from the outside jumping on the inside the car looks even cleaner nice dual uh gauge pod here Again, interior looked really clean. The car was dyno tuned by Mikey in the Midwest. I'm not sure what shop it was, but if you're in the Midwest and you're looking for a tune, dyno tune, Mikey supposedly from the people I talked to is the go-to guy that deals with Hondas and other cars, but he's the go-to guy and everyone's talking about Mikey. So I don't know who you are, but you must be doing a damn good job tuning these little fart cans to make some good power. Now talking about this car real quick, it put down 305 wheel horsepower, 202 pound-feet of torque. He does a lot of marketing right here, but that's not important. It's a Comtech supercharger kit, stage two. There's stage one and stage two. Stage two essentially means there could be a smaller pulley making more boost, and it has a actual cooler that runs coolant through the, through the lines. As the air comes into the engine, it gets cooled, which creates more power because the cooler your intake air temperatures are, the car runs better, happier, healthier. He's advertising that he has the three inch pulley right here, running about nine PSI. When we test drove this vehicle, it was me, my boy, I'm a Puma, or Mike Puma, whatever your name is. His real name's Andre, but he's been on a eighth gen Civic under that name, I believe. So there was three of us test driving that car. I saw it boosting six pounds of boost. Maybe it was the weather. Maybe the car wasn't fully warmed up. Maybe he just doesn't know what he's talking about here and he got the wrong pulley set up. It's possible. People build cars like crazy these days. But 
the car has a j35 throttle body okay and this car was idling perfect the tune was pretty much spot on the last car he had a j35 throttle body on it and the car was really not running properly it was running like it had a cam in it and barely able to idle anyway long story short to add a supercharger on a vehicle you need proper modifications in order to increase fuel flow to the engine and this guy is running dishworks injectors anywhere from 575 to 600 again he's not really sure about that he's running a low side fuel pump in the gas tank 265 perfect and he actually did something that most people won't do is actually increase the size of the fuel pump diameter wires the gauge and that helps with voltage regulation and prevents it from overheating and over demanding the electrical system on the fuel pump if you don't know what i'm talking about that's okay i don't know what i'm even talking about <laughs> the craziest thing about this car is the exhaust system he got a 2.5 inch vibrant exhaust and he also added a borla muffler there's actually is a crazy setup and we'll talk about it a little bit but he's got a lot of mufflers on this car again the gauge pods battery relocated suspension dropped about one inch so what happened we went to test drive the car he canceled on me because the battery wouldn't start but we ended up meeting up we drove the car the car drives fantastic the car pulls hard as shit this thing with three people in the car it's just redlining first, second, third, like crazy, spinning through first and second. And all these viruses are keep coming up. I don't know. Have I been to some websites? Hmm. Anyway, the thing pulls like a rocket. The 215 tires on those XXRs were pretty much worn out. So a lot of wheel spin. It was colder weather, probably around in the 40s, in the 40 degree uh, temperature mark. So not too great for traction, but the car moves. The tune is beautiful. It's running Hondata uh, engine management system. Again, dyno tuned, drove pretty dang good. The only thing with that car is the paintwork and the exterior, even though it looks great on pictures, was really not up to par. A lot of dings and dents. Paint peeling, I don't know, maybe it was repainted, maybe not. It's just hard to tell. The exterior's fit and finish wasn't that great, the XXRs even though they look good on pictures they there was curb rash all around them they had old tires that were really worn out but the tune and the things actually were nice uh used supercharger kit unknown mileage the car had about a hundred thousand miles the guy was asking about 10k i think he would have worked with me at eight and a half k but again i did not purchase this vehicle because of the exterior condition and again i get it old used cars are pretty hard to find that look good anyway he had the supercharger on this thing for about 5,000 miles and he sung the vehicle due to too many cars in his inventory the weird thing is he said he just changed the oil I looked at the oil it's also black already which isn't a good sign maybe a lot of blow by by the piston rings and you know if there's a lot of blow by that means maybe the compression is off in the cylinders a little bit maybe worn out cylinders but uh, awesome car, drove really good, pulled really hard on the low RPMs all the way through Redline. And because he has this exhaust, which is custom, he got he got his header, but then he got the, the factory exhaust that's at the end of the car, the resonator that comes with the exhaust, but then he also added inline two mufflers. And they're not resonators, guys, they're mufflers. So he, essentially he has three mufflers on this car that he did this custom exhaust on. It sounds like factory it sounds like oem with more flow i'm assuming and it's awesome because the first road trek supercharged civic si went to test drive with the headers and the full capic exhaust was ridiculous loud not nice not a great experience whatsoever driving this thing potentially as a daily driver but this thing sounded amazing real quiet real luxurious you know quiet you can have a conversation great good job with that setup and this is the first time I hear about somebody adding inline mufflers on top to their exhaust setup. Then the question you might ask is, is it restricting flow? Potentially, but he had it dyno tuned to that back pressure that all the, the whole system created. So they're working with what they got. But it works. And the craziest thing is by having such a quiet exhaust 
you can really hear that supercharger whine guys it was incredible just really loud car hauled ass so very fun again eighth gen civics they just feel amazing the gearing of the the gearing of the transmission the whole aurora of vtech roaring and you got almost 9,000 rpm red line is amazing especially on a supercharger so let's compare both cars that i drove this one with the comtech supercharger root style blower has a benefit of having a lot more low end power which we all know the civic si is missing it's got good top end but low end city driving pretty pretty slow it might as well drive a non-si model and it's going to feel the same way when you're under vtech so the root style blower is way better in that essence that it creates more power down low compared to the road trek supercharger which really shines towards the top rpms now as i spoke with a gentleman he also gave me a few good tips he also said how much more reliable the root style comptech blower is compared to the road trek's craftwork blower because the root style is actually spinning at a lower speed and the actual fins that spin inside the blower are much stronger and durable compared to the road trucks which spins it's like a turbo blade essentially it has the same shaft as a turbo but it's a real supercharger and it spins much faster the rpms are much higher which can possibly lead to more failures on the bearings inside the supercharger if they even have bearings i think they have bearings and what happens at that point is let's say you break a blade from the from the wheel turbine wheel supercharger wheel that turbine wheel can go into your engine through the intake and blow up your engine cause a lot of damage so again root style blowers are a lot more torque you're down low create more reliable power and it's a good option for somebody that's looking for more power down low both cars worked good but i gotta give it to the comptex supercharger the thing moved way better way faster and it was on a stock clutch which held power just fine the other car with the road tracks had an aftermarket clutch a little bit stiffer but both both cars with 300 wheel horsepower moved pretty good again comptech had more low end power top end hard to say both moved really well and again with without creating a return style fuel system on these vehicles both of these cars are roughly going to produce maximum of about 350 to 450 wheel horsepower before you you really need to start upgrading the fuel system even more with the lines put a dash 8 dash 10 whatever dash you think is necessary to create the optimal flow you need for more power the blocks can definitely hold a good five six hundred horsepower quite reliably that's the beauty of the k20 motor that comes with a factory lsd on these 8th gen civics sure it's the wrong wheel wheel drive probably rear wheel would be much more fun in a setup like this but it is what it is anyway i'm gonna cut this video guys hopefully you learned something from this video let me know what do you guys think about these civic si's supercharged it's two two for two we test drove pretty good experiences with both of them i'm curious to ever test drive a turbocharged civic si i'm curious how the response would be how the top end power would be but uh nothing turbocharged locally here so we'll see but one thing I did learn from both of uh, these cars is that people don't take care of their car as well as I take care of my car. Hell, I got a shitty LX Civic R18 automatic that was passed down to me that I've been daily driving for the last eight years. And I feel like my car is cleaner than most of these project cars, which, which is going to lead me to decide maybe I shouldn't get another project car. Maybe I should just use my car as a project car and stay tuned for more content guys subscribe to the channel if you unsubscribe make sure you subscribe back because we got some eighth gen content coming in the near future boys and girls anyway i gotta go you guys already know what to do leave a comment down below see you on the next video peace i ain't here for the money i ain't here for the fame though it might be nice to own a jet plane i'ma do it all for you come along and see us